I want to talk for just a little bit about my motivation for living, basically. In addition, in addition to just enjoying being alive, one of the main reasons I enjoy being alive is what I do for daily work. I love the idea, first of all, that I'm 85 and one half and working every day at something I've worked at for 70 some odd years. I enjoy that. I enjoy it more and more because I have strived single-mindedly my whole life for one and one only goal, to be the best landscape painter that there ever was, or that I can be, should be the same thing now. I was looking at some old sketchbooks of mine. This is 83 to 85. That's a bunch of time. But I wrote stuff. This is full of drawings and sketches and things. But I write stuff too. Let me read you what I wrote here. It says right there, it says, Note, the landscape should be appreciated, revered for its own sake. Nothing new there. It's just what I felt. I was only 53 years old when I wrote this stuff. I, I defined the difference here between pictures and paintings. Pictures are accurate representations of what you're looking at. A painting is an interpretation of what you're looking at. We are looking as painters for another kind of accuracy. I've heard it said, if you want to know what a place really is, not just what it looks like on the surface, but what it is, consult an artist, a painter of landscapes. And the way I put that is, the accuracy that I'm looking for personally is the achievement of emotional and atmospheric identification, the feel and sureness of a place. You feel you are home. And I want that feeling to come out of my paintings. I want to communicate that feeling of accuracy, em emotional and atmospheric identification. People will invariably look at one of my paintings and say, oh, I don't know where that is. Well, they don't, but if they think they do, I'm a success. I'm getting some recognition for what I do for its emotional and atmospheric accuracy. So let me talk about that painting right over there, which I just finished a week ago. It's a, it's a desert rainstorm, which is one of the most emotional, atmospheric things you can have happen to you if you're there. In West Texas and other places in the West, Many times there'll be a dust storm blowing along just before the rain. It's because of all the wind picks up the dry dust and blows it, and then it rains and makes mud out of everything. The smell of the desert it, after a rain is the most delightful perfume you've ever smelled. It's creosote, basically, creosote bushes. Have an odor, you can rub the leaves like that, smell your fingers. It's just kind of a cloves, sort of a sharp, tangy smell. And the rain brings that out in the desert. It's wonderful to be there when that happens. The road in that painting, in actuality, this is where artistic interpretation comes in. The road in that painting in actuality, is paved. It's a paved road from Alpine, Texas, down to Big Bend. It's Highway uh, 
118, something like that. Anyway, I have removed the pavement and gone back to pristine nature, no fences, nothing there. The way that it was, in my mind, the way it should be. That's my message. I think you'll get it when you see that. The painting on the easel right there, that I, I'm working on it, it's nearly complete. Depicts a southern hill country of Texas seen in March, late March, when the very first flowers come out. It still looks like winter. The grass is winter colored. The oak trees, though, are giving away a hint that it's not winter anymore. Their leaves are starting to turn. Oak, live oak trees, these are live oaks, are supposed to be evergreen. They're not actually evergreen. There's a couple of weeks in March where they make new leaves the old leaves die, they're sort of yellowy, orangey colored, they're really something to see. And just for a few days they're like that, and the new leaves push the old ones off. So they always have leaves. Even though they are an evergreen tree, they are also deciduous in that sense. And I love that time of year when winter's over, here comes spring. Depicted in that painting, I'm not done with it, I'm still working on it will be more of those pink flowers. They're called Texas Phlox. Pink Phlox. P-H-L-O-X. And they, they're they just gaudy bright pink. I haven't made them as pink as they are in reality, but I will. This is what I have to do to finish this painting. I'll also put in, I'm going to include a few what we call desert poppies, where white flowers big blooms, they, they start out right away. One of the first things to bloom. And so those two flowers and maybe a few little yellow daisies here and there. So that painting has got an atmospheric condition in the sky that I just love to do. I call it a sun blast or it's raining sun, S-U-N. And it's, it's wonderful to be able to do that. I'm going to give you a secret. This is a secret. Don't tell anybody. I mostly do that kind of sky with paper towels. What, you may say? Yes, I say. I use paper towels to create the basic forms of that sky. And just a little bit of brushing, not much, just a little. The rest of the painting is all brush. I have to give up palette knife painting because my hands don't really work that well. But I'm able to produce in intimate details in, in painting. For some reason, I can't write very well anymore, but I can paint. All right, the other painting I want to talk about is that seascape over there, the sand dunes and ocean at twilight. This is one of the most atmospherically accurate paintings that I've done in recent years. I'm very proud of that painting, specifically the color of the sand in the foreground. It's very subtle. Sand dunes are subtle. You could even say you've seen one sand dune, you've seen them all. Not true. Not when a painter does it. So the color changes in there are very subtle in that foreground sand. The ocean itself reflects the sky. Sometimes you can see the ocean reflect like that even in the middle of the night. It's holding light, sort of. It's really odd how that happens. But it's reflecting the color of the sky directly above our heads, not in the painting. The waves are calm. They're settled down. It's twilight. The last rays of sunshine go happening in there, in the sky. The bird, the gulf tern, seagull if you will, is not looking for food anymore. He's looking for a 
place to roost. I'm not sure anybody knows where they roost, but they do go away. Then they're back at dawn, squawking and fighting over food. But this time of day is so quiet, not much wind. You can see the sea oat stalks are nearly all straight up. In the wind, prevailing daytime winds, they blow over, they're leaning, you know, leeward. Anyway, I'm very proud of that painting. I think it accomplished a communication that I really wanted to do. The next painting I'm going to do is this one. This will be a sunset over West Texas. Sunset over West Texas, and I'm going to do it on a 24 by 36. I can't render as well on large canvases as I used to. I've done my last five, six foot canvas. Now it's easier for me, being physically impaired, to do smaller paintings, but make them better, each one better than the last one. This is going to be elegant.